Luke Wells showed his powers of concentration and skills on a sluggish day of LV County Championship cricket at the Keir Oval, where Sussex battled really hard to get ahead of their host Surrey. The home side resumed on the second morning on 301 for seven, looking to try to get to 350 for a fourth batting bonus point. That job was initially left to their overnight batsmen, Chris Tremlett and Gareth Batty, who both started off well enough. At six foot seven, you wouldn't expect to be hit in the head too often, but Steve McGoffin managed to do that to Tremlett as Sussex showed their intentions with the ball. And those intentions paid off after half an hour when Batty, on 37, chose to pull instead of cut and drag Chris Jordan's short ball to Wells. 338 for 8 soon became 344 for 9 as Jordan struck again to bowl Tim Lindley for 3. But Tremlett ensured that the 350 was reached by pulling the former Surrey man Jordan for a maximum. Jordan responded immediately by cleverly yorking Tremlett to pick up his second Fifer in two matches since his move to Sussex. He ended with 5 for 92 after Tremlett went for 34. So Surrey had managed to make 351, perhaps a slightly disappointing total after reaching 247 for three at one stage. Sussex had 50 minutes before lunch to get their response underway. They lost Chris Nash before the break, although he did appear to inside edge this ball from Lindley onto his pads before being triggered by the umpire LBW. Surrey then missed a golden opportunity to get a second wicket on the restart. Wells, for some reason, called for a single which just wasn't there, but Jason Roy missed the stumps by a fraction from mid-off, with Wells well short of his ground. With the likes of James Anderson, Stuart Broad and Tim Bresden all amongst the wickets in this round of games, Tremlett would have been keen to get amongst it himself, but had this appeal for a catch behind rejected. Amongst these moments of concern, Wells batted with maturity, defending manfully while choosing the right balls to score his boundaries off. He'd hit six of those as he reached a patient half-century midway through the afternoon session. He'd needed 122 deliveries to get to his 50, his first of the season in only his second innings. He celebrated that by planting Batty back over his head for a six as Sussex approached T in a rather good place. However, just before the break, they lost Michael Yardy, who'd spent two hours and ten minutes over his 23. He then turned a ball from Batty to Rory Burns at leg slip. That left the game evenly poised with Sussex on 100 for two, 251 runs behind. And had Lindley won this strong appeal against Ed Joyce, Surrey may just have been ahead. Lindley at least does win the best appeal award of the season to date. It was a major moment because Joyce's wicket is always a big one, especially given the form he's shown ever since taking over the captaincy from Yardy last season. In Gary Wilson, one Irishman has already starred in this match, and Joyce was hoping to make it a good match for his countrymen. Instead, for now at any rate, it was Eastbourne's very own Wells who was making the headlines, even though he had to take painkillers for a sore knee. He simply loves playing against Surrey, having scored two hundreds against them last season. Surrey may have been aware too that once Wells gets to 50, more often than not he goes on to three figures. These strokes saw him close in on that again. With the day coming to an end, Wells did his job, cutting Vikram Solanke's first ball to the rope to bring him his 12th four to go with his earlier six. Overall, he'd batted for just short of five hours and had faced 234 balls. Having got to 50 ten times in his first class career, Wells has taken that to 100 on a half a dozen occasions. There was even more joy for Sussex before the close as Joyce completed his second 50 in two innings this summer, this one off 93 balls. And by the close, he'd added 104 with Wells, who ended the day on 108. With Joyce on 51 and looking in fine form, Sussex will want to bat themselves well ahead on day three. They'll resume on 204 for two, leaving them 147 runs behind but they do have some big hitters to come.